Logic's compressor plugin features seven different compressor models. Most are based on classic analog hardware compressors, but the first model is a more generic digital compressor. In fact, it's the original compressor that was always included in Logic before the other six analog models were added. This is the platinum digital model, done up in Logic's traditional blue. While the other models sometimes limit their control sets to reflect the original designs, the platinum model has the full set of controls available, so it's a good choice for this initial look at the compressor plugin. As you can see, there are several sections. To the left is the input section, with an input gain knob and level meter. This goes hand in hand with the final output gain knob over on the lower right. These controls are not really part of any modeled compression circuitry, they're just the generic plug-in I.O. controls for gain staging signals coming into and exiting the plugin. Unless the incoming signal level has been drastically altered for some reason, the input gain is probably best left at unity, 0 dB, with the threshold and makeup gain knobs used for setting the compression effect. In the center are the main compression controls, threshold, ratio, attack, release, and makeup gain, plus an additional knee control, which I'll come back to later. Just to the right of these are several buttons. The top three let you enable and set compressor's auto gain feature. Remember, last time I mentioned that since compressors work by attenuating the louder parts of the signal, the average overall level is usually decreased and is typically brought back up with the makeup gain control. Auto gain is an alternative way to deal with that. When it's enabled, instead of having to dial up a makeup gain setting by hand, compressor will automatically determine makeup gain based on the settings dialed up and the amount of gain reduction occurring, with two different target levels for this automatic makeup gain level. Personally, I prefer to make this setting by hand, so I usually keep auto gain off, but for those new to working with compressors, it could be a nice convenience. The other auto button, below, has nothing to do with makeup gain. It enables an auto release feature. When engaged, the virtual compression circuit varies its release time in response to the program material the changing audio signal. This variable program-dependent release time is based on the manual release setting you make with the release knob. It's a simulation of the behavior of many classic compressor circuits, and in the case of some of those classic designs, a program-dependent release is one of the secret ingredients that make the response of those compressors so musical and desirable. This one I usually have engaged, especially when using compressor models based on hardware units that had that behavior designed into them. I'll touch on it a bit more as I go through the various analog models on tap in Compressor. At the top, of course, are the buttons for selecting those different compressor models. Just below them is either a VU-style gain reduction meter, showing how many dB of attenuation is occurring moment to moment, or a dual graph. The display on the left, which we saw earlier, is a transfer curve graph, which indicates when the signal is above threshold, and the amount of gain reduction to be applied to signals above threshold based on the ratio setting. It also shows the knee setting. The knee controls how the compressor responds when a signal approaches and exceeds threshold. With a hard knee, compression doesn't kick in until the signal passes the threshold, and then gain reduction begins immediately at the set ratio. Likewise, gain reduction stops as soon as the signal drops back below threshold. But this could make for abrupt level transitions, so many compressors employ a soft knee response. The onset of compression is more gradual as the signal approaches the threshold. Gain reduction kicks in at a lower ratio than the set value as the signal nears threshold, and then the ratio increases as the signal passes the threshold, only reaching its full value slightly above the set threshold level. This allows for more subtle transitions in and out of compression, and can either make the compressor more transparent when desired, or, when being used creatively, allow for a stronger compression effect without undesirable side effects. Most classic vintage compressors have a soft knee response, along with a program-dependent release, and this is another part of what gives those designs the musical quality they're famous for. The other display on the right is a histogram which shows the gain reduction occurring against the signal's waveform. While the gain reduction VU meter is undoubtedly the most useful for making settings, these additional displays can also be very helpful. They not only show the moment-to-moment -moment action of the compressor, 
but the transfer curve also illustrates some of the differences in response between the various analog models. On the right, you can access two different sections, the basic output controls and additional settings for controlling the compressor's sidechain. I'll come back to that in the next video. The output panel has four distinct sections of its own. As I noted earlier, at the lower right is the final output gain knob, along with the output level meter just above it. Again, like the input gain knob, this is not part of any analog emulation, but would typically be left at Unity, setting the compressor's output level with the makeup gain knob. But settings of some of the other features in the output section might affect that level, and then the output gain knob could be used to compensate. Near the top are two controls for an independent limiter that's included in the compressor plugin. This follows the compressor and is intended to be used as a final control over any peaks that may slip through the compressor section. There are no controls other than threshold, no ratio, attack, or release. This limiter is as simple as it can be, it just does its thing. It can be very handy, especially if you're using the compressor for more gentle compression or as an effect. Having a separate limiter available means you don't have to worry about catching and controlling every possible transient peak with the compressor itself. This frees you up to use slower attack settings or more subtle ratios, shaping the character of the compressed signal to taste, and then clamping down on any stray transients with the limiter instead of having to compromise the compression effect for peak control. I often employ it when compressing drums. I set the compressor to fatten up the drum sound a bit and then avoid any overloads, typically from extra hard kick hits or snare rim shots, with the limiter set just for that purpose, having no effect most of the time. Below the limiter is a four position distortion option. You can switch it off for an ultra clean signal or enable soft overdrive, harder overdrive, or stronger clipping. This is where the logic compressor emulates the analog circuit character, the tube or transistor edge of its various classic compressor models. Each position generates a slightly different balance of harmonic distortion components, primarily odd harmonics as these graphs show. Soft adds mostly lower harmonics, like you might get with gentle tube overdrive, while hard and clip add progressively stronger, higher harmonics, as you can see. I'll touch on this analog character when we get to certain compressor models. Finally, below the distortion knob is a mix knob. Its normal position is at maximum, 100% wet, 100% effect. This means the output of the plugin is the compressed signal, like you'd normally get with a compressor inserted in the signal path. Lowering the knob mixes in some of the uncompressed input signal. At 12 o'clock, labeled 1 to 1, uncompressed and compressed signals are at equal level. Lower settings would be mostly uncompressed signal. If you start at minimum with only the uncompressed input signal, you could dial up the compressed version to mix in with that to taste. As many of you probably know, this is a convenient way to implement parallel compression, sometimes referred to as New York compression, combining the compressed and uncompressed versions of a signal instead of using only the compressed version, as with standard inline compression. Parallel compression is a subtle but slightly different sounding variation of the effect you get with regular inline compression. It's often used with drums, among other things. Typically, you might dial up a much stronger, over-the-top compression effect than you'd normally use. But then only blend a little of that in with the uncompressed signal. It lets you employ a much stronger, more dramatic, more exciting compression effect without sacrificing transient impact and punch, which is preserved via the uncompressed component of the blended signal. In the next clip, I'll finish up this basic look at compressor's controls with the sidechain section.